Hello and welcome to Stop Motion Magazine's S1 silicone body tutorial. This is the silicone casting uh, tutorial for uh, making the body. So silicone body casting. Yes, and we are finally at the final stages. Um, what we are going to work on is this design coming up in the next picture, which is a uh, silicone puppet with a plastic feet, with plastic feet, plastic hands, plastic head, sculpy mouths. And uh, it's a very dynamic puppet because it can be modified and changed and you can do a lot with it. Uh, somebody asked me what, why are the feet plastic? Well, because they are uh, easier to work with and easier to animate and they have are less prone to breakage when you're dealing with um, dealing with walk cycles and stuff. Uh, also, the hands don't, the fingers aren't going to curl while you're animating. That's a great thing because honestly, when you first start animating, uh, the one thing that you, you kind of do is you bump things. So bumping the hands and not getting used to that while you're focusing on the movement. A lot of little things here and there. So this is a great puppet to start out with. It's also a great puppet to, to do with silicone because it doesn't take that much silicone um, to actually produce. And uh, one of the things you're not going to see is we, we don't have a hand tutorial because if you can make the feet, you can make the hands. It's pretty much the same process. Also, um, if you're going to do replacement mounts, you can do Sculpey and you just sculpt them right on there. Um, so let's get started. Uh, here we have uh, some armature wire. Now this is one, H, one eighth of an inch thick aluminum armature wire. Um, I use the Arcor company's uh, armature wire. It's pretty sturdy and lasts a long time. Um, I'm going to cut out a length of uh, this armature wire and I'm going to measure it to my mold. So um, you start at the base with the feet and you work your way through the body. A kink at the, at the hips right there. Um, and then a kink up the, for the spine. Yeah, be gentle now. Uh, you do not want to. You do not want to crimp this uh, or pinch this wire with uh, pliers. So do not use pliers. Use your hands. Um, you're gonna have to use a little bit of strength. There are nylon pliers, but with nylon tips. But um, even then, I mean, they'll still leave a mark. So it's best just to use your hands. Um, I'm gonna bend at the shoulder. Go all the way down to the hand. And then you're going to cut at the at the base of the wrist. So you'll you'll see actually. Um, actually, I have it marked. And um, there, there we go. Now remember, there's going to be some curvature in this as well. So uh, be prepared because once you start playing with the armature, like getting it into the mold, it'll um, you'll have to bend it here and there just to make sure that it fits properly and it's it's basically floating in there. Now you're going to cut a second length of this wire. And uh, it's going to be about the same size. So here we are measuring it up. All right, now we have the second side here, and uh, it's measured to the other one. Got to fit it, so you got to like bend it here and there, so they actually match up. Once that's done, you're going to cut a, a length of wire. And uh, it's going to be serve as your neck. Now you got to put a loop in it at the base, and then it's got to be long enough that it can fit into that neck cavity. See, it's like that, all right. And then this is going to go and act as your neck. Now what we're going to do is we're going to attach all three pieces together. I'm going to clip this end here to make sure it's exact fit. And then I'm going to tape the two sections together, the, the left and the right, using just a regular, uh, it's just regular tape, paper tape. Um, you know, you be as neat as you possibly can when you're making the, these armatures, because I mean this is the skeletal structure of your of your puppet. So if if it's a little wonkish or a little off or a little funky, it won't animate right. So this is a really vital stage to make sure that um and also probably break too, uh, that you you do everything properly and, and get the armature built uh, cleanly. And once that's taped, you you fit it together. These are the two halves fit together in the mold to make sure that they actually fit. You're gonna bend these here and there. Get them all to line, and then what you're going to see here is I'm uh, tearing off a piece of uh, some propoxy. Propoxy is a two-part uh, plumber's epoxy, and you just squish it together between your fingers, and the white part and the black part turn into gray. And once it's completely gray, it's ready to go. Then you're going to have two parts separate into two little balls, and you're going to work on the hip. So you're going to put it at the base of the spine. And you're going to leave a little area for the the hips to swing on the edges there so 
And what I try to do here is sometimes I'll do a square and then sometimes I'll do a triangle um, just for the shape. A uh, triangle tends to work the best, of course, but uh, a square sometimes is good if you want to put like a square stock in the in the hip and you can glue it on or, or you can actually use the propoxy and stick it in there so you can actually make a, a flying rig so the so the puppet can actually um, be attached to something and, and be able to do these jumps without having to use a, uh, um, a fork or something to poke in the back of it, which sometimes doesn't work. Now you're gonna you're gonna try to make this nice and smooth, nice and nice and normal. Make sure it fits into the cavity. You know, um, you, don't forget which side's up, by the way. And uh, the other thing to do is let it dry. So you just gonna let it dry once it's hardened, like it is there. Um, you can fit it into the cavity if, it, if it's kind of come out of shape. There we go. So I'm testing it out there. Make sure it fits properly. Now what you see here is I'm going to cut some steel wire. You can you uh, want to either use steel or aluminum, so it doesn't react with the platinum. By the way, don't use copper. Um, and you're just going to uh, wrap that little neck piece. You see how I'm just doing a, a circular thing around there, so I get a, a nice grab on it. And then you're going to attach it to the the um, shoulders area where the two sides meet. I know I'm doing this off camera. I'm sorry about that. Uh, it's kind of hard when you you're building things to actually do the, the videos at the same time. So here I am wrapping this around and um, just get it, get it nice and secure on there. And you wrap it around the neck, wrap it around the body, wrap it around the arms so it doesn't shift around and move. And then you're going to take the propoxy and you're going to mix it up together again. And then you're just going to apply it to both sides of the neck, the front and the back. And you're going to make it secure there. You'll see here, uh, there it is. Nice little shape, it's gonna fit into the mold. And uh, now, now's a good time to let it just sit there, let it dry again or harden. And the uh, next stage is take the palm olive uh, green. It's palm olive original. This is great stuff. And uh, this is gonna be your barrier, um, your release agent, so to speak. And, we, and I sped this up 500%. We're probably not gonna watch the whole thing, but. See here, I'm just brushing it in. Try to keep it nice and clean. Um, yeah. You know, you just paint it in there. And what I'm doing is I'm covering all the surface area of the interior part of the mold including the body, body cavity. Uh, this allows for the silicone to actually separate from the mold without pulling any part of the mold off. Um, it's important, it's vital. So uh, it also prevents you from gluing the mold together. If you don't add a release agent to both sides, you'll glue the mold together. And I've done this on like, I, I did it maybe once the first time I ever tried to cast silicone. I had this really gorgeous body sculpt that I liked and, and it was like a, an alien thing and I was loving it and I molded it and then I cast the silicone, and oh man, when I tried to pull that sucker apart, it just did not want to give. And I think I told the story before, but I, I smashed it, I smashed the mold and recast the body and from the silicone, because the silicone was fine inside. But yeah, anyway, make sure that you put a release agent down. If you don't, um, you're just gonna be sorry, so. All right, this is my favorite part. This is uh, using my favorite silicone, in fact. This is uh, motion picture effects Tinsil gel silicone. Um, this stuff is great. I believe it's the wherever they get this stuff from. Uh, they they supply other suppliers, so you might want to look around if it's if you're regional in a different country or whatever. But or different part of the United States, in fact. But uh, I believe they'll ship this anywhere. Um, this tinsel gel is uh, easier to work with than plat platinum based gel or platinum gel. Uh, it also is great because it's a uh, um, it's like a fleshy type of silicone, so it's awesome. So here I'm mixing part B and part A together, and A is more of like a fluid, and I'm measuring that in using my measuring cup. And um, I'm gonna close that lid up, and then what I'm probably gonna do at this point is I'm gonna add a, um, make sure you always close your containers, you don't want them to get dirty, especially in a, a nasty garage. Um, I'm gonna add 
a pigment. Now you can buy the pigments from uh, from motion picture effects or wherever you're buying this stuff from. There we go, pigments. Um, you know, one of our advertisers, uh, um, the engineer guy, s sells a ton of uh, silicones and um, and this this type of uh, uh, you know pigment agent stuff. So you can actually, and I put like maybe a drop in there. And just one little drop causes it to uh, change color. And look at that flesh tone that I'm getting out of that sucker. Now, um, like I said. <coughs> Excuse me. You can get this stuff um, either on the East Coast from uh, um, the engineer guy, or West Coast from uh, Motion Picture Effects, and uh, this is this is a great stage here, right? So what you're basically going to do is you're going to um, mix it up as best as you can. Try to avoid bubbles, but it's, it's almost impossible at this stage. But what you're going to end up doing is you're going to paint this onto the interior cavity of uh, the the puppet design or or the mold. And uh, this will help to ensure that if there is any bubbles in your cast. Oh, here's the UFC, by the way. It's ultra fast cast. This actually kicks the, um, it's like a kicker is what we call it in the industry. And basically what it does is it makes it the speed of how fast the silicone cures increase. So um, basically I will, uh, I'll put that in there and I, it, you know, that stuff will set within an hour if I put too much in it. <laughs> if I put enough in it, it's either hour or two hours. Um, and this allows you to do a lot of castings in one day. And so just stir that stuff as best as you possibly can. All right, so you just stir the hell out of this stuff. Now, something to be said about this whole process. This takes a long time to make a puppet. You need to uh, be patient and... Uh, willing to uh, make mistakes and willing to do things more than once because uh, as you learn your first cast I mean I know professionals they're first casting on the first mold um, they're just figuring that mold out you know so, it, so it, it'll have bubbles on their first cast so do not be discouraged if you have bubbles on the first go around of your puppet you're gonna cast maybe two or three of these guys before you're actually satisfied so uh, I mean if for first casting if you get one and it's perfect wow that's awesome so <clears throat> we're going to paint this stuff in here. And uh, you just want a thin layer. You don't want to put this stuff in here th too thick. Um, remember, this is your first layer. So just, just be gentle. Um, there's only really two layers. So you do this one. And this, comes out, this acts as your outer skin, just in case you do have like a little small, small amount of bubbles in there. Um, I know people that that cast silicone without degassing the silicone, which honestly, I think that's a big mistake. You shouldn't, you, you should not try to do that unless you have done it a bunch of times and you're good at it. Um, you would definitely need to degas silicone um, when you're casting it. It's it just better, you know. Um, if you get a bubble underneath the surface, you, you'll see it if you're animating sometimes. So, but there's ways to fix that. You just, you know, whip up some of this stuff and stick a syringe in there. Or actually, there's this, um, gosh, what is this? A smooth on makes it, and it's a, uh, I think it's like, a, it's called Silpoxy, and uh, you basically, it's it's like a glue. It's a silicone glue that has like a, an activator already in it. When it hits the air, it starts to kick, and, and then when you put it in the, sil you can you can basically like fix all your rips and stuff in your puppets with that stuff. You just put a little color pigment in it and then just seal it back up, or you can just uh, cut a little hole in the puppet and, and pack it full of this silpoxy. And that's some great stuff. It, it, it's, it's actually worth buying. So um, I believe you can buy that through the engineer guy. I don't think the other people that I mentioned actually sell it. Um, it's one of those things that's actually a rarity to find on the shelf. So you probably need to call uh, the engineer guy to get that specific thing or look for it online. Um, in Los Angeles, I only know of maybe one place that actually sells it. So you're probably asking, which place is that? Uh, that would have to be, man, what is that place called? It's a little little uh, miniature toy sh toy model shop over in uh, near Burbank and Sino area. Uh, if I remember, it, I'll put it I'll put it in the descriptions. So here we are. I'll. Uh, 
I'll just keep talking about the mold and, not, and stop babbling here. Here I'll uh, paint in the, the other side. And you can see stuff is welling up in the base of the, the hips there. Um, that's fine. Just remember that you're going to be putting your, your puppet in there. So be prepared. And let's skip a little bit ahead here and see where, where we're at. Okay, I've sped this up here. This is, uh, this is the silicone section. So we're going to pour in our A, we're going to pour in a B, we're going to pour in our, uh, our pigment, and we're going to pour in our um, UFC, Ultra Fast Cast. Um, and you're going to mix this up like I am. So don't worry about bubbles because we're going to degas this using a degassing chamber. And this degassing chamber that I'm going to be using is actually uh, bought off of eBay. And basically it's a pot that you, the steel pot that they, uh, they sell. And, uh, you get this, uh, plexiglass top. It's really thick plexiglass top with a silicone rim around it. So that way it will actually suck in. And then it's got some ports. I'm going to open that up and stick it right down there. And then I'm going to Adjust all my things. I'm going to tighten everything up, and I'm going to turn on my uh, my vacuum chamber. And uh, you'll see that the little little needle is going down on the, on the meter up there. What we want to do is we want to have bubbles start to come up. And once it gets down to uh, about 90, um, you'll see the bubbles really start popping out. And that's actually where you want to be at, um, really, really, really low. There we go. Start. It's called boiling. So it'll start to boil. I have a, I'm burping it right now, so I'm letting the bubbles kind of pop up, and then I let some air out, let some air in, and that causes the pressure to change. And as the pressure changes, it, it causes the bubbles to drop. So here we go. And uh, now this one is a normal speed one, and this is me actually showing you what the uh, what the uh, uh, boiling effect will look like. Here we are. It's nice and tight. Um, this is actually part of the, probably the f fun part of silicone making, honestly. Um, I should add that I bought this chamber for about a hundred dollars roughly. And then, um, you get them in gallon sizes. And then I also got the vacuum, uh, pump, which is in behind this thing. You can see this little white cable sticking out at the top of the screen there. That's actually the vacuum pump. And I got that for about seventy dollars and so the whole thing the whole package costs about two hundred dollars and and uh it's definitely worth it as an investment it is an investment it's a major investment um but if you're gonna be doing lots of silicone or any silicone puppets uh it's important to to have this um you have to degas your your puppets and stuff let's let's pop forward a little bit here um all right so now we're at the the you can see how many bubbles are actually coming out of this sucker now you wouldn't think there's a lot of gas inside the silicone but there's a ton of gas so i mean even these like microscopic bubbles traditionally you're just gonna you're gonna burp this stuff now i've seen people with really fancy uh vacuum chambers and they're able to like really pull the shit out of this stuff you know excuse my language but <laughs> they're really able to pull all the air completely out of the silicone um not 100 percent necessary you just need to get the bubbles to the point where they're so freaking small that they're not going to make any trouble for you um, yeah, so, and, and the other thing too is, uh, the grade of your, uh, your vacuum pump, because these vacuum pumps, you can get them from, um, what do you call it? Uh, you know, eBay is where I bought everything, but you can get them from like Harbor Freight sells a vacuum pump that's, that's decent. Um, uh, the, it's basically a, a vacuum pump that you use for, uh, taking the Freon out of, out of refrigerators, you know, or the coolant, whatever it is that they're using in there. Um. Yeah, and so I think we're at a stage now where I probably have to start burping this thing, which means you just add a little air to it. And then, all right, I jumped ahead here, and um, we're actually going to start putting the armature in, and then pour the silicone over the top of the puppet and put the two halves together. Now I want to talk about this armature here because what you're going to see that goes in the mold is actually uh, me experimenting, and, and of course I do I goof off here and stuff, but um, I've. I've checked the forums and looked around, and, and people were talking about wrapping the silicone, or wrapping the armature with, um, what do you call it, with, uh, you know, different materials and stuff. Uh, this specific, specific armature is wrapped with, uh, I think it's gauze and Teflon tape. Uh, I do not suggest to do this. Uh, this was just me experimenting, but uh, in fact, honestly, the armature, because this tensile gel is so, so 
uh, soft, flesh-like, you could just put the armature in there and not even wrap it with anything. Um, people wrap the armatures, tend, usually are tending to uh, conserve silicone. Um, uh, the real honest way that I know how to do it to do it properly is to cast your silicone puppet in foam latex first and then snip away at the foam latex and then cast it in silicone that's the only way that i actually know that's uh, that's a tried and true people have done it and uh um they talk about it. you you can cast in urethane first like urethane foam but that'll that'll end up being a sponge it'll absorb all the silicone honestly just put the armature in there and don't even worry about doing that extra stage you'll cost yourself more money doing r&d research and development than you will actually casting the puppet properly and getting a, a functional puppet so that being said um you can either ignore what i did there or you can try it out um i tell you what the problem is the gauze will absorb all the silicone um and uh, you, or not all of it but it will absorb a great amount of silicone it will actually make your puppet look a little funky and then also it will uh it won't bend properly it'll be like a brick now i've cast this puppet uh, uh, numerous times actually so um, I did a, a, a quite a few bodies here and uh, this is actually the first casting of the puppet um, the one the, the image that you see at the beginning of the video and at the end of the video the final puppet is actually the second puppet that I cast uh, which just has the armature directly in the body you know so you don't have to worry about wrapping it it's basically what I'm getting at um, here we're gonna put the blowing some bubbles out and we're gonna put the armature right in there and then um, we're going to pour some silicone into the other side here and uh, because you have you have a limited amount of work time but it's not it's not detrimental like with foam latex man when you're working with foam latex foam you have a small window to pour your foam into the mold silicone a little bit more forgiving uh, especially if you don't use any ultra fast cast and you're just going to let it sit for 24 hours, which, you know, if, you, if you're not in a rush, definitely do that um, because then you can play with the silicone a little longer, um, you know, and you'll, you'll tell also when it's starting to set up and it's starting to kick and, and you'll go, man, that stuff is, is getting thick. What's going on here? That's when you need to start hustling and get the stuff done, you know. Um, notice how I have the armature there that's in the back you know that's on the back half of the of the mold and then I'll take the front half and flip it on top so that that way they fit perfectly together um, strategy here strategy blowing some bubbles out all right I'm gonna pour that sucker in there and then we go one two three whoops no I'm getting stuff out of the way one two three yeah. boom all right and now you can band this using uh, some bands. I like to just put like 30 pounds of, of weight on top of it. Um, it just depends. I obviously haven't done it on this, this part of the video, but um, I will. There we are. Oh, there we go. Putting some weights on top. And uh, that'll make a huge difference because it'll, it'll keep it from, uh, from oozing out. It will help to keep it from oozing out. All right, so there we go. I got the weight on there. See, this is the second casting. Now, the video was the first, that last one, that was the first casting. This is the second casting. That's why you see the weight difference on there. Um, and it's, it's only good that I show you the, the second one because the second one actually turns out great. Of course, you got to use a screwdriver to open it up. There we go really gentle and shazam there she is or there he is um, yeah that came out really nice actually um, this design that I made is just just a fun fun little body blank and I can honestly use because I just did it this way I can use whatever design I want to for the head the hands and the feet I can I can make multiple puppets out of just this one body sculpt. Um, that's something I didn't really point out before. Uh, you know, when you're making when you're making puppets and you're making like a ton of different people, and they all have different heads, and you're just going to make a, all the same body size. Why don't you just make a body and then change the heads? You know, it's that simple. 
So there we go. We got all the flashing still in there. There's no bubbles. Bends perfectly. Um, and then I'm going to clean it. I'm going to wipe it off. <clears throat> and get all the, the, what do you call it, the dishwashing soap off of it. All right, now we're at a very vital stage. Um, this is the cleanup stage. And of course, you're looking at a blank screen here. But uh, this is the cleanup stage. Um, I'm using cuticle scissors. And I'm going to cut the flashing around the body. And I'm going to try to be as close to the body as I possibly can without digging into the flesh of the actual puppet itself. And this is a very challenging stage. <clears throat> if you do happen to cut into the body of the, the puppet, um, you just mix yourself up some, uh, some silicone and just rub it on that section, you know, fill it in and be very gentle. Use some Bestine also to clean it afterwards to smooth it out. Um, you know, dip your finger in some Bestine. We use a rubber glove, you know, but dip your finger in a Bestine and then just kind of rub it, rub it off of there. Now the cuticle scissors are just any cuticle scissors. Actually, my wife yelled at me because I was using really nice cuticle scissors at one point <laughs> when I first started doing this. And it made me realize that actually there, there are grades levels of cuticle scissors. So you can actually just go to the grocery store, get some cuticle scissors, or you can go to the beauty salon or the beauty supply store and get some really nice cuticle scissors. And the difference is actually, actually pretty drastic, um, at least from my observations. So you can cut in there really close. I know it's out of focus. I'm sorry about that, guys. But all right, here is a whole nother stage. All right. And so what we got here is I am going to put Vaseline on the highest grade sanding paper. So I think this is a 120, maybe 200 for the Dremel tool. I think you can get some special ones. Um, and then what I'm going to do, I'm going to use Vaseline. Now, I, I have a face mask on, by the way. I have an apron on, and I've covered my surfaces with a trash bag so that way I don't get nasty. I use the lowest speed possible, and I buff out the little um, ridge that's on the different sections of the puppet. Um, if you've done your, your cutting properly, you might not even have to do this stage. Um, but this is actually a very vital stage. You can overdo this, by the way, and you'll, you'll start, you, you'll burn the puppet, actually, or you'll, you'll uh, shred the sections of it. So another advice that I can give you, which I didn't do in this tutorial, um, this comes directly from my buddy Dan Fields, is to use um, like a green foam, like almost like, and this is a trade secret, honestly, but like almost like a mattress uh, cover foam, you know, the one like the egg crate foam, use something like that. But there's like a green specific one that, um, and, but I believe you can get away with a lot of these different things, but you basically would snip it and you would, you would attach it to your Dremel and you would use that, uh, to buff out. Um, I don't know. I was always told just to use the highest grade sandpaper and, and uh, and this Vaseline, but that was back in 2008. Somebody told me to do that that way. So, and honestly, I, I get away with doing this method. Um, if you're if you're gentle and you do it right, uh, it shouldn't it shouldn't be too difficult. And remember, you're using a lot of Vaseline here, so just take it easy and go slowly. You know. All right, let's jump ahead because you could, you know you'll sit here watching me do this for for hours. All right, now we're at um, you know the fine tuning. I have some three in sand, three M sandpaper. Now this is a method you can use just in case you don't have the Dremel thing. You can just go ahead and try to sand it. Um, it's a more difficult method. This is just me fine tuning the puppet and just going in there and just trying to buff down any any funky ridges, any funky parts on the puppet itself. Yeah, that was over quick. <laughs> and then uh, here we are. We're doing any kind of repair. So I'm making up a batch of uh, this uh, ultra fast cast silicone using the tinsel gel, the, the uh, kicking agent and the UFC kicking agent that is, and then uh, some pigment. And basically um, we're just gonna mix this stuff up and then apply it to the puppet. And then we're gonna let it just kind of sit there and uh, something to be aware of as well, because it's silicone, it will run if you put too much on there. So you want to make sure that you put enough on there to, to f you know, fix the hole that you've maybe made by cutting using the, um, the tweezers. But at the same time, I mean the scissors, but at the same time, uh, you want to make sure that 
you're not putting so much on there that it's gooped on there and it's going to slide off the puppet. Now, for this type of repair, I definitely suggest using a UFC, an ultra fast cast, because if it sits there for 24 hours, silicone over time will just kind of just goo down slowly. So um, I put like an overabundant amount of uh, UFC into this kicker, this kicker into the silicone. And uh, by putting it on there, it'll cure within like an hour, maybe two hours at the, at the most. And it'll allow me to, um, to make sure that it's not running all over the place. And the other thing to, to take into consideration here is too, is you can use Bestine to smooth out that seam as you're working on it. You gotta be careful too, cause you don't wanna add too much Bestine to your silicone while you're using your, you know, you basically dip your finger in it yeah, kind of tap it or shake it off a little bit, and then you just rub it on the on the silicone, and that will that'll smooth out the the silicone. But you don't want to make sure that it turns it to water. Basically, is what I'm getting at. So here we go. I put a lot of EOC in here. There we go. Believe it or not, that's that's considered a lot. It's about one percent to whatever you're whatever you're mixing, and I probably put maybe twenty percent in there. And, you know, mix it up nice and nice and good. And you don't have to worry about bubbles because all you're going to do is just take your glove and just dip your finger in there and just smear it on there. And here you go. Here I'm, here I'm adding a, a shitload <laughs> on there. Excuse my language. Oi. But, uh, you know, I'm, I'm definitely adding it on there. And then I'm smoothing it out with Bestine. See, there you go. Smoothing it out. And then you will never know there was a seam there. Now, if you have something with a lot of detail with some some like texture and print on there, you might run into some problems. But okay, now I'm using makeup powder. It's it's has non-colored makeup powder. It's basically just white powder. It's baby powder basically, and this allows the puppet to uh, get rid of that shiny sheen that's on it. Um, I don't like my puppets to actually be that shiny, to be honest, because then they they don't they get like uh, specular highlights all over the bodies, and human skin doesn't do that. So um, I powdered it up. Yeah, and uh, that's the puppet, man. Uh, you know, if you have any questions, definitely send me some emails uh, to editor at stopmotionmagazine.com. That's my email directly. And then you can also uh, you can put posts in the in the comments section. I will put material lists up there for you guys to check out once uh, once this thing's up there. And then, you know, really, the whole process of making a silicone puppet is definitely an educational one, your first go-arounds. Um, I uh, I enjoy making it. I actually am. There you go. See, it looks pretty good, right? All right. Yeah. So I enjoy sculpting. Um, it's it's one of my life passions. It's I love sculpting. I just can't sculpt at the scale that I want to sculpt at anymore. I have to sculpt, if I sculpt, I have to sculpt larger things, and I have to reduce the amount of time that I use it because I start from carpal tunnel. But um, anyway. So this is the sculpture. The, I mean, sorry, not the sculpture. The the stop motion puppet, the silicone puppet. Plastic feet, plastic hands, plastic head, sculpy mouth, uh, clay eyebrows, or so to speak, clay eyelids, and uh, beads for eyes, little glass beads. You uh, you can also do like silicone hair on these guys, which is kind of cool. Um, you can cast the eyes into the head, so you don't even have to worry about like rotating the eyes. You put a little piece of uh, like Van Aken clay on the eye and just move it around for like the pupil. Um, you can also do it digitally. Uh, there's also the replacement mouths, which you'll just do all the basic uh, mouth shapes for animation, which hopefully someday we'll have another tutorial for that. And uh, you can do the in-betweens and stuff like that as well for that. Uh, the clothing is made out of uh, some kind of material that my friend, uh, she she went and bought and she did. I personally, I'm not really happy with the clothing. I would I'd much rather have a four-way stretch cotton uh, I've used that before in like the Aquabat Super Show when we did uh, did the animation for them. We used a four-way stretch cotton. We also modified Mego clothing. So remember, those those feet are actually Mego feet. They're Mego shoes, Mego action figures. If you're wondering, and um, there's a bunch of websites you can order like remade stuff, and then you can mold and cast that stuff to to accommodate your puppet design. Uh, it's actually a good scale because they make clothing in that scale. So, and they make a lot of props like guns and stuff. So, uh, if you wanted to make a puppet, that's a really good. It's harder to animate in a smaller scale, but it's it's great since it's it's closer to uh, um, a scale that you can find lots and lots and lots of props for. So, um, I highly suggest trying to trying to get stuff like that. Um, yeah, and there's the puppet man. It's going to be easy to make these. Honestly, if you have a uh, um, 
you know, a vacuum chamber is probably your biggest Achilles heel at this is this venture, but you can get one of those on eBay for pretty cheap. Um, and yeah, there it is. Send me some emails, uh, ask me questions. It's all good. My email is editor at stopmotionmagazine.com and leave your comments in the comment section. Hopefully I can answer them in a timely manner. Uh, that's it. I hope you enjoyed this tutorial and we'll see you later.